Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Tis the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you are nasty. Oh, and this is the week. If there's ever a week to get nasty, this is the one. It is Friday, January 6th. Welcome in. It's me, Mike. It's my best friend, Jason. Howdy ho. Cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz. (laughs) He's over there, roaring up a storm. On today's episode, we will break down the rest of the matchups. We have the fantasy face-off. Uh, someone uh, on this show is about to get shamed in a way that they oh, man. won't forget. I, I in love- a way that they may remember. <laughs> Who knows? Well, well said. What a wordsmith. <laughs> um, I feel like so. It's been a long time since I've uh, been That's shamed, true. and yeah. I am the shame. I'm I'm happy that it's only happened. Uh, I think this will be number three this season, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like that has backfired. Because it, it perhaps it has. There's, a, there's a combination here of like um, stored up, pent up, um, you know, well, punishment. Right. Uh, combined with like the, the, you know, the week that we're in, the weirdness of it's just like, you know, what would be really fun this week to really give it to them. I believe 50 percent or so of the shames I have received have been at your hands by like point something. <laughs> yeah, be better. So that's been a frustrating thing. Maybe I handled it on today's show. Maybe I didn't. Now, here's the cool thing about today's show. Obviously, Jay Grizz sitting in and Andy is not here. But we do have a DraftKings segment today, which means we have another oh. chance, Mike. Uh, I'm looking at you, Deucers Alley. We All are right. taking on Kyle the Borgogan at the end of the show and i'm just curious owl are you gonna stand with your man you know i am oh right. what a mistake you have made <laughs> and brooks i know you won't so no. oh no oh no there it is <laughs> uh welcome into the show everybody this is our final friday show of the year it's been quite the season next uh next week we go into the two show a week format that means the shows will be on tuesday And Thursday, we do not go away. We have the Footy Award nominations. We have just gone through the process of of who is worthy of a nomination, who is not. You know, we're talking, you know, the best at their position, the waiver wire pickup of the year, the poopiest pants, and of course the prestigious awards that are given to us. Mm -hmm. Which are those those are the best awards. Those are the best awards. The nickname of the year, the show moment of the year. We really should have like host of the year. <laughs> oh man. Yes, we should. We <laughs> host of the host of the year, deucer of the year mm-hmm. and just see what the people do and whose feelings can get hurt the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not it's it's really uh much more shame than joy in that uh, scenario. All right, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Each and every Friday of the season, it is Foot Clan Friday. We give away a $100 gift card brought to you by our friends at FantasyChamps.com. A perfect, perfect timing for a supporter on Patreon, Laura Crother. You have $100 to Fantasy Champs, Mike. I know you were on there. I hope web- I got your name right. You were on their website. Uh, I was. I oh. was I was designing up some things. Uh Champ, champ, champ. Champ, champ, champ. Related things. They have uh, they have some cool stuff up there, including a ring that you can customize and put your own face on it if you want to. I mean, why would you not? Why would you not? I mean, we already have a couple with our faces <laughs> on the ring, but we need more. Um, and a big shout out, actually, to Kyle the Borgogan, who allowed us yeah. to champ, 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 because... He laid down. <laughs> you did. You well, did. I mean, Mike Evans and Devontae Adams kind of took things into their right, own hands. Right, but we did beat you in the championship. Um, I just want to throw that in there. How do you? How are you feeling, Kyle? 
Uh, I feel indifferent knowing that I didn't get to play Allen and Diggs. Hey, oh, it, which, that had. is a good piece of news, which we will get into. But anyways, Fantasy Champs, uh, thank you so much, Laura, for supporting us. A $100 gift card on the way for you. Uh, also at FantasyChamps.com, you can use the code FREERING. If you purchase a trophy or a belt right now to celebrate your league, you can add a $59 championship ring and get it for you for free nice. with the code free ring. And the Foot Clan title t-shirt is available. The swag, I should say. The swag, not just the shirt, some other stuff as well. Shopballers.com. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Moments before we started recording the show, we got the update from the Buffalo Bills. DeMar Hamlin FaceTimed into the team meeting, had the message, love you boys. I mean, just sensational stuff. That means that the the, the breathing tube was able to come out. He is breathing on his own. I mean, it's just, just awesome. It is a fantastic, fantastic thing to wake up to. I mean, because on the West Coast, of, of course, as we are still early over here. But, you know, still the well wishes are being sent to DeMar on his recovery, which I'm sure he has a lengthy one in front of him. But the fact that he is to this stage after what we saw on Monday, miraculous. Yeah, absolutely amazing. It's really nice to have clarity of the situation that is that is positive, knowing that this is not the uh, outcome it could have been. And, yeah. and it's just it's wonderful. And, and now we also have clarity on. The actual situation of that game, the NFL has officially declared the Bills Bengals Week 17 game a no contest. It will not be restarted, replayed. Uh, that game does not go into the record books, and so for fantasy football purposes, I know, like in in our leagues, that was a time to f firmly establish who the winner yes. is, um, which was me. And it so was that was that was great. The that League of Record news. champion <laughs> Jason brought yeah. brought it down for his second time. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for all those out there, I mean, yes, uh, yesterday was some really good news on Demar. The situation was clarified. So, like, if if you've won your championship, I think this, now is the time. Like, go ahead, celebrate, enjoy it. There are you know some leagues out there where it's. They're still trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, as I've more and more thought through things I shared with the guys, I thought an interesting idea here for uh, games where they're just razor tight, if you wanted to go in and take a player's season average and then run it through the filter of the uh, adjusted schedule points, like their defense. So Joe Burrow versus the Bills. How do the Bills do against the quarterback? Well, generally they take away – I think it was 2.3 points from a quarterback's average. Just a, another possible idea because, again, it's it's a very, diff, very, very difficult situation. But so get, get together as your league and handle it like grown-ups. Right, yeah, and that, that is the main takeaway here. So you're basically in favor of using their projection because that's what a projection also is. I mean, you could do it a, a number of different ways, but it's basically taking the player's average and looking at the matchup and making a projection. Sure. I, I am. I find that as as time has gone on, I'm more and more in favor because of the weird situation of all the tight matchups being co-champions. And I don't think that takes anything Which away is, from uh, either party. Perfectly fair with that, uh, or, or perfectly fine with that idea as well. Eagles. Oh, and, and along with the the no contest, we do have an update that so teams who are involved in that. Should that make some seating feel kind of like uh, what, unfair? What's going on here? We have the possibility of uh, a coin toss. <laughs> the NFL loves their coin toss, man. And if you like, if you this is the first time you've ever heard of a coin toss, it happens in the NFL draft. There are times teams are tied, and they're like, "How do we handle this?" Like men, I know. Anybody got Does anybody have a quarter? <laughs> we will let luck decide. <laughs> The NFL rolls with that, so the Bengals are NFC North, AFC North champions if Baltimore defeats Cincinnati on Sunday, and if those two clubs are scheduled to play in the wild card game against each other, the site for the game will be determined by coin toss, and we do have the uh, a potential neutral site mm -hmm. for the AFC championship that is being discussed by the NFL. All of these specific decisions still need to be technically voted through by the NFL. That'll happen later today. 
I it has to be a super majority, but I cannot imagine that this will not be voted through. So I I, I take this as exactly what is what will be happening. Yeah, I, I think the neutral site is kind of a, a a as good of a compromise as we can get given the circumstances that we are in. Eagles coach Nick Sirianni, he's told reporters Jalen Hurts is trending in the right direction to play. Good news. Uh, the commanders, Brian Robinson, did not practice again on Thursday. Antonio Gibson, my former, former champion, yeah. champ, uh, whatever he is, he has a special place in my heart, but he was placed on the IR. And guess who's back? <laughs> One of the original Nasty Boys, Jarrett Patterson, has been elevated from the practice squad. I'm not saying – I'm just I'm, – no, I'm not actually Yeah, we're, we're not saying I'm playing Jarrett Patterson, but shout out to uh, – you know, we won a championship with Jarrett Patterson yeah. being a Nasty he Boy last year. He was a part year. of that. Uh, the 49ers, Christian McCaffrey did not practice on Thursday. Kyle Shanahan, Shanahan has said he expects Elijah Mitchell to be active, so there it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, brother. I, I thought about just – trying to smash Elijah Mitchell into my DraftKings lineup because Elijah Mitchell, should he be the guy and Christian McCaffrey's not active in their 100-point favored matchup against the Cardinals, will be an absolutely great play. But having to lock that in today, I mean, this is if you're playing DFS this weekend, this is a weekend where news right up until the last minute of what team's motivations are, what it actually looks like, who's warming up. You know, for instance, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there's a lot of questions of like, oh, the coach is saying he's going to start. Is he not? Well, let me ask you this. Will Kyle Trask suit up? Will he be right. um, dressed to play? Because he's not usually. If he is, yeah, he, we have our answer. Yeah, on the Seattle news front, Ken Walker did not practice Wednesday and Thursday with the ankle and an illness. He's kind of not been practicing lately and still been a stud. Tyler Lockett did not practice Wednesday and Thursday. Also a stud who usually gets on the field. Josh Jacobs is questionable for Saturday. Are you ready for the matchups, Jason? Let's go. Fantasy Forecast. Chiefs, Raiders, Titans, Jags, Bucks, Falcons, Patriots, Bills, Vikings, Bears, Ravens, Bengals, Texans, Colts, all on yesterday's show. Let's get through these matchups, Jay. <laughs> the New York Jets are 7-9. and nine. They are taking on the Miami Dolphins, who are 8-8. Eight eight. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Miami, minus 2.5. The over-under, a delightful 38.5. Sweet. Uh, on the Jets' side, we did get news that Mike White will be out. So that means, of course, Zach Wilson will not be starting for the New York Jets, and it will be Joe Flacco. So... If you're rolling with the Jets pass catchers, the fact that it is not Zach Wilson, I think you can uh, have some confidence in those guys. Week two, Garrett Wilson, that like breakout that felt kind of out of nowhere uh, with what we were thinking about the Jets quarterback situation. Garrett Wilson's had some success here with Joe Flacco, so he is still in play. Tyler Conklin still in play for me, 25 targets over the last month. On the other side, Tua is doubtful. Teddy Bridgewater is questionable with the finger. It could be Skylar Thompson getting the starts. They added great friend of the DFS podcast, Mike Glennon, oh. quarterback. He is back, ladies and gentlemen. He's Kyle, what, I mean, how many victory laps did you take when you got this news? I got mentioned a lot, but you can't play him on DraftKings, unfortunately, at all. Wait, what? Yeah, he's, he's not. not he's on the player pool. Devastation. Draft I mean, Kings. Everyone, everyone was really wanting Draft to play. DraftKings, we work together. Play the giraffe. They get Mike Lennon in there. I mean. They said he's too tall. That was their final rule. Uh, they said, this guy's neck freaks me out. Can't put him in. Oh, man. Can't put him in. Now, that's not my word. Uh, right, you know. of course. We would never. No. We would never. Uh, Raheem Moster, Jeff Wilson, Jason. What does the Ouija board say <laughs> about the Miami backfield this week? Uh, Raheem Mostert couple weeks ago was in a smash situation Jeff Wilson came back took the lunch money and Raheem Mostert was devastating so of course we avoided him in championship week and of course he caught a bajillion passes and was a super stud for fantasy on on benches everywhere are you playing either of these guys I I, I think either one are are the same thing which is a low end flex option Jeff Wilson had more snaps last week 65% even though Mostert got all the checkdowns and ended up with the better fantasy day, the matchup is not great. The over-under is 38. 
That rhymes, so I'm not really into either player in a significant way. I, I would rather, you know, I mean, you got to get down in the weeds. If I had to play one of these guys, I, I actually lean Jeff Wilson. Um, Is that because of the snaps? It's because of the snaps, and I think that the fantasy value in this game will come from a goal line opportunity <laughs> off of a Joe Flacco uh, fumble or interception, and so... Uh, you know who's the goal line back we I mean that's even up for debate so sure. they're both about the exact same Miami needs to win and New England le needs to lose to get into the playoffs for the Dolphins I should say so they are motivated they are going to play Tyreek Jalen terrible matchup it doesn't matter you're going to play him the Carolina Panthers are six and ten taking on the New Orleans Saints who are seven and nine the DraftKings Sportsbook line New Orleans minus three and a half the over under a little bit better we got a 42. Okay. We got a 42 over here. Andy Dalton, my steel underpants start of the week due to Carolina being terrible against the pass. Like I said yesterday, 30th and 30th versus quarterback the last two weeks and schedule adjusted. Uh, Rashid Shahid is in play for me. How about the rest of the Saints, Jay? What are you doing with Olave and Alvin Kamara? Yeah, I mean, t to me, Olave obviously is you know a sensational rookie season. Last eighteen yards away from from the one K. Yeah, last week played sixty one percent of the snaps. I would play him over Shahid personally. I think that you've got a bomb touchdown coming to one of these two players. I'm going to take the more talented of the two, even though Shahid has obviously been on a roll. You don't want the snaps. Well, I I, I think Chris Olave. I mean, he's he's getting back from his injury the fact that he was you know up to 61 percent this last week I would expect that you know he plays this final game and is you know in the 70 percent range has some downfield targets and again he's even though Shahid has shown you know some great speed and that he's he's got a future he's not as talented as Olave what are you doing with Taysom four, I mean we got four straight weeks now of him being top 12 I think he had 14 carries last week he did. Can you, would you? Let me ask you a question, genuinely. Would you like to start a running back, getting good volume <laughs> in your tight end position? I certainly would. Then start Taysom Hill because that's what's happening. On the other side of the ball, we have Sam Darnold, who has been quite respectable, but he's up against a pretty decent Saints defense, especially fantasy fantasy purposes. Tenth against the quarterback. That's what the Saints are right now for the season. How are you handling these guys? Because DJ Moore stepped into the fire, was reborn for fantasy purposes, a top 13, Jason, mm. top 13 fantasy wide receiver in four of five games with Darnold. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been really good the last – month or so and I think you can certainly put him in your lineup we knew the talent would be there and I said this about halfway through the season when uh, DJ Moore was atrocious was has had destroyed everybody's fantasy hopes and dreams and was the wide receiver blah, 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 blah. Uh, wide receiver yeah exactly I said that we know he will have a strong end of the season because at the end of the year, <laughs> we'll have to question it again. It's just, every year. It's like, oh, DJ Moore. Is He's so back good. in the top 20. Exactly. You knew he'd somehow get back there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, now that we, now that you feel like you could trust him, he will let you down. But are you playing him? Probably. Yeah, okay. I, will be, I will be let down by DJ Moore because I will put him in my lineup. Deonta Foreman, Chuba Hubbard, who are you starting? Uh, Foreman. Foreman still has, I mean, we've talked about it, right? Like, it's rare for a running back to have this kind of archetype that we're used to seeing in wide receivers. Like, I love starting Gabe Davis. Uh, Gabe Davis sure. isn't always good, but when he's good, he's great. That's kind of what you get in Deontay Foreman. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at, um, you know, uh, trying to decide who might get the carries or the touchdown opportunities with, um, Moster and Wilson, or I've got the upside of Deontay Foreman running for 162 yards and having one of his hot games. I, I think I lean that way. My start of the week, Zach Moss or Deontay Foreman. De Deontay Foreman. I will. You. That's nonsense. Um, Jarrett Patterson. Um, oh, Jarrett Patterson over Zach Moss. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I've actually got. Uh, you are a a man filled with rage. I. 
it's not rage, it's disgust. And I think there's a subtle difference, but an important one. Um, and okay. I would also, uh, I would also start your former champion over Zach Moss, who's on the IR. Yes, that's my. That's how I do <laughs> fantasy football. I it is not. a guaranteed zero, <laughs> right? And I will have respect. J.K. Dobbins' weak leg, mm, or slow, Zach Moss, the slow leg. Yeah, I'll take. I, I, will, I will take half of Zach Moss over <laughs> all of Zach Moss. Yes, <laughs> the Cleveland Browns. Are seven and nine. The Pittsburgh Steelers are eight and eight. What a show we have for you today. The DraftKings <laughs> Sports Team, baby. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Pitt minus two and a half. The over on over unders at forty and a half. The Steelers, they are grasping, <laughs> stay strong, little roots. <laughs> That's what they're saying to their playoff hopes. If they win, and Cleveland, uh, or if they beat Cleveland, and Miami loses, and the Patriots lose. There is a chance. Yeah, it, it, it which is, both of those things could happen, it or is all three of these things. Not I say. the most outlandish idea for those. Th you know, it's not like you you need um, the Houston Texans to beat the Buffalo Bills in in this scenario. This is right. three games that could happen. I I think New England losing is probably the least likely of them. Um, but I'll, I'll certainly be rooting for Tomlin to have another season. Uh, at or above 500, which is just incredible because he's dealt with injuries and a rookie quarterback and, um, you know, some, some pretty poor play. Nicholas Chubb, dominant season. I mean, look at this stat line, 290 for 1,450 yards, 12 touchdowns on the season, and yet has been quite disappointing since – Voldemort, aka Deshaun Watson, has taken over the starting starting quarterback position. How many, how many games has has Watson started? Uh, well, Kyle, since week thirteen, so five. Since week thirteen, here are uh, Nick Chubb's fantasy finishes, basically with this offense that he is now playing in: running back thirty two, running back twenty nine, running back thirty two, running back twenty three, running back seventeen. So he's a. I also want you to read. Uh, so that first. Finish, you said. What team was that against? Well, that was against the Houston Texans, who are supposed to be the easiest matchup uh, for running backs. It sucks. I mean, I get you You play him. The matchup is terrible. You know that Nick Chubb is not likely to be a weak winner for you, but tons of volume, touchdown opportunity. Amari Cooper, wide receiver nine of the season. I mean, he's he is in play. Donovan Peoples-Jones. The breakout kind of fell apart once Deshaun Watson started to be the starting quarterback. David and Joku, not not really. I mean, uh, we've had a couple of touchdowns thrown his way by uh, Watson. We also had a game. I think he had 114 yards on 12 targets. That was sure, Watson. but I'm saying like he had he was trending to be a very consistent player. Like week four, 71 yards, 50, 74, 71, 81, 90, 99, 61. And then the the consistency has absolutely vanished. Yes, he has a couple touchdowns in that time with Watson, but he was on a trajectory where it was like, we can get excited. Like, Peoples-Jones is finally here, and I don't think we are there. What no, One reception in each of the last two weeks. And this is, you know, a, a game, a matchup against the Steelers who are playing for their season. The last six weeks, they're number one in fantasy points given up to wide receivers. So you got Amari Cooper on the road who you still probably start Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper and um, Nick Chubb are very similar. Like, Sure. I expect pretty lousy games from both of them, but they're very talented. They're very involved in their offense, and they should be started. You just don't think big games are on the way. You going back to Njoku or Njoku? Yeah, I like David Njoku this week. If you beat the Steelers, it's usually against tight end. Obviously, he busted Three last straight weeks. week. Uh, well, you you had um, one of those was the bad weather game. I mean, there are there are some reasons, and uh, you know, show me a tight end that doesn't have three straight weeks of uh, bad performance. Sometime Evan on the Ingram season. would never, and and I will show you <laughs> Travis Kelsey. <laughs> he's the he's fair the fair enough. Najee Harris since week eleven, he's the running back six. He is absolutely in. Are you the, the Muth? Like, if you're fine with Najoku, you're fine with the Muth. Are you playing the any of the pass catchers, though, Pickens or Deontay? Uh, I, Deontay Johnson, who, by the way, I mean, these numbers, 
unbelievable. 137 targets, 84 receptions, 844 yards, zero touchdowns, 137 targets, and no touchdowns. Uh, That's because his quarterback uh, will finish this season on probably a 17-game pace of about 10 of them. It's very difficult to score touchdowns. Are Um, you playing it? Uh, yeah, full PPR, I think he's a flex option, but otherwise, you know, you you uh, you probably have better options. It's funny that who's you know the better option, like Deontay Johnson or Greg Dortch, right? Th- that's like a similar comp. You got a guy who's going to get ten targets, not down the field, probably not score a touchdown, but you don't you don't ever want to think of Deontay Johnson in in you know that vein. in Dortchland in Dortchland. <laughs> It's not a place that former superstar wide receivers want to be. No. All right, quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The Los Angeles Chargers are 10-6, and six, taking on the mighty, mighty Denver Broncos at 4-12. and 12. They are mighty because they are, in fact, favored. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Denver is minus 2.5. The over-under is sitting at 40. And that is because the game is wholly dependent on the outcome of Baltimore-Cincinnati. If Baltimore loses, the Chargers will be locked into the five seed. Meaning that the Chargers could just come out and say, we're going to rest our starters. Clearly the sportsbook line is saying that they are afraid of that. Are you afraid of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Staley is... I was talking to the people. Oh, yeah. Let me Let's let's listen in. I hear no fear. Jason, what's your... Oh, you... <laughs> I heard nothing. Um, I don't think that that was fear to me, unless I'm misinterpreting it. Um, but I have fear, and let me okay. explain why they might need to have it. Staley, when he's talked his coach speak as coaches speak, <laughs> they he's, he's specifically talked about the difference in the matchup. He's talked about the difference in the seating having a big impact because of who you're going to play. So... That's why he's playing. He's not playing because, um, you know, he wants to stay greased up, you know, keep the wheel moving and um, put the pedal to the metal. He wants the right matchup. If he has the right matchup, I think you're going to rest your starters. So you should be afraid. Um, You should have pivot options. Be prepared if you've got Chargers players. And if the game goes the right way, if, um, you know, if uh, Baltimore wins the game, and I mean that going the right way for the Chargers needing to play, then I love the options here for the Chargers. Yeah, it, I, I completely agree. And you better have options to move away, but there could be a situation where your guys or your from Chargers are still in play. The Denver Broncos side, Russ, he did it, Jason. Oh, he... If, <sighs> if you've been following along on Twitter, there's been a very uh, fun graph of Bathrooms in his house versus passing touchdowns. Will he ever have more touchdowns than bathrooms? He did. He, he did finally, it. It took him seventeen week 17. Yes, so he has 13 passing touchdowns, has 12 bathrooms. Look, I've, I've, I've tried to like pull some punches, take it easy here on Russ, but a way uh, to, to uh, get favor with the public, don't have 12 bathrooms. Yeah, I mean, how much, how much, how much locomotion you, is going on in this house? How, how much potty you got to do? Man. <laughs> oh, I just used that one. I like to spread it around. I mean, is it? What's, I know. What's I've, funny I, is I, I've I, never, I've never checked into the actual the facts of this. No, I, I have. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Just twelve, 12 bathrooms. bathrooms? I, I this was l- a long ago. This was like when he moved to the, you know this. Does city. he have bedrooms? But that's what's crazy is I think it was like a four bedroom house. It, it's it's something like that, like four or five bedrooms, twelve bathrooms. I don't know. Like, I I want to believe that certain Why? bathrooms in his house have a bathroom. Four bedrooms, twelve bathrooms, and a nine car garage. Yeah. So I would like to believe that, like, you can go into a bathroom. What is happening in and, this house? And in that bathroom, there is a door to take you to another bathroom. Like, there's also an indoor basketball court, a game room, theater, indoor pool. Well, see, that's I mean, fine. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, that's that's. NFL's... I'm just saying that's where the square footage is going when when there's only four bedrooms. I got you. I got you. And a and a whole bunch of bunk beds. <laughs> yeah. For the for the parties, the team parties. <laughs> yep. 
goodness gracious. Uh, Latavius Murray. Could be worse, the matchup here against the Chargers. Uh, 18 opportunities the past week. Eh, yeah, well, I mean, eh. yeah, he's he's a fine volume play. Eh? Ask me Zach Moss or Latavius Murray. No, I won't. Okay. Because I know the answer. Your answer would be uh, Zach Moss, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jerry Judy over the last month, averaging seven for seventy six. He's in, he's in play. He's sure. he's actually been pretty good. I mean, you just talked about his average, but it's consistent as well. Um, as consistent as we've seen, Jerry Judy. The matchup is not great against the Chargers, but this is a this is also a situation where Denver is. You know they've they've got a new coach there that's wanting to win a game. They are trying to get some good mojo going into the off season. They're going to come out and play in a divisional matchup. If the starters are resting on the other side of the field, that's not just offensive; that's defensive, and you could have a good game here for Jerry Judy. Cortland Sutton last two weeks seven and six targets. He has been absolutely average, finishing just outside of a fringe top thirty six wide receiver. So maybe if your league is deep enough, you're going there, but don't expect fantastic things. The New York Giants, 9-6-1, and one, taking on the Philadelphia Eagles, 13-3. and three. Fantastic. A divisional divisional game here to end up the season. It's got to be a close matchup, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Philadelphia minus 14. The over-under is 43. That puts the Giants at an implied team total of 14.5 points. That puts the Giants at backups. I mean, that that's yeah. what it does. The line is saying what everyone expects, what the coach has not come outright and said, but basically insinuated. Um, I'm seeing a, a tweet yep. from uh, Pat Leonard, who uh, is a verified you know, uh, reporter, covers the Giants. He says what he saw at practice confirms for me that the Giants will likely rest several starters versus the Eagles. They have nothing to play for. Take the bye week, get healthy, go – Prepare for the playoffs, and the Eagles, Jalen Hurts trending in the right direction to start. They've beat plenty of teams this year, uh, only lost once with Jalen Hurts as the starter. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to mop the floor here. 13 teams over the last decade that were two touchdown favorites or more in the final week. Those teams are uh, 12-1. and one. So, history is on the side of the Philadelphia Eagles locking up the number one seed. We've talked about big money bonuses on this show. Not sure if you've seen it going around on Twitter. Kenny Galladay is closing in on one of his incentives. I have seen that. $750,000 bonus. It is on the line this week. Should he pull in 76 receptions <laughs> on the weekend? If he, He's just 76 catches away from his bonus. Oh, there it is. So let me ask you this then, Jay. No, I will not start Kenny Golden. No, <laughs> that's not the question. Oh, okay, <laughs> on the Eagles' side, is it is it full confidence in in every normal Philadelphia starter? Yep, Dallas Goddard. Yep, Devonta Smith. Yep, AJ Brown. Yep, Miles Sanders. Yep, Jalen Hurts. Yep. I do think there's a situation where you have half a game here. I am more confident in Miles Sanders. Uh, you know, less confident in AJ Brown and Devonta Smith having a massive game. When you're favored by this much, there is a situation that often happens where, you know, and, and obviously the Giants are resting their starters. You get up two scores, you know you're playoff bound. You don't want to keep your guys out there. And so the receivers will probably not have to catch a lot of balls in the second half of this game. Their upside is capped, but you hope that they get to the lead by scoring a touchdown, but I, I just can't imagine a world where I'm benching those guys. So yeah, I agree. They're, they're in the lineup. It, I agree. I'm not benching them. I'm expecting them to play a half. Yeah. And just hoping that my guy gets the points. The Arizona Cardinals are. And, f and, oh. and, and I know we haven't, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're here for the 4% of people playing right. in the championship weeks, but just to reiterate, this is the kind of garbage. This is why every, every one of these games is, Silly and stupid. Right. We're hoping for a half from players we're playing in the championship. So <laughs> let's fix it. Yeah. Week, week 17, one weekend. That's that's, Absolutely. The, uh, that's the right weekend to play. The Arizona Cardinals, 4-12. and 12. The San Francisco 49ers, 12-4. and 4. The ultimate, <laughs> ultimate palindrome. The latest that we could possibly get. I mean, a week 18 palindrome is something, something to behold. It's special. DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco, minus 14. The over-under is 40 and a half. 
That puts the Arizona Cardinals at an implied team total of just over 13 points. Blah, blah, blah. The Cardinals have lost six in a row. <sighs> the San Francisco 49ers the division is clinched. They can get the number one seat if they win and Philadelphia loses. We just covered. That's do you not re- likely. Do you remember uh, the how crazy the line was in that awful weather game? Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, it was like 30-something, lowest in a decade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had some really bad games, some bad Vegas implied team totals. Um, this is – the Arizona Cardinals are tied for the lowest implied team total of the year. They are not expected to score many of the points. Very impressive. Uh, one of those reasons could be the fact that DeAndre Hopkins is out. His future with Arizona – it remains murky. It's a pretty big cap hit should mm-hmm. they decide to trade him, but perhaps they could get a Devontae Adams type deal done, help to rebuild this as the Cardinals have a lot of uh, holes to fill on the team. David Blau, he will be playing. You will not be playing him. No. James Connor did not participate on Thursday, knee and shin. He has been great. He helped people win championships when championships were being played. I don't expect him to play in this meaningless game. It seems neither does Las Vegas. So without James Conner, without Kyler Murray or Colt McCoy, without DeAndre Hopkins, you basically have a few options that are going to be active in this game that you could play. Marquise Brown. Um, talented Greg Dortch, 10 targets turned into poop last week. <laughs> Could be another 10 targets for, you know, 10 yards yeah. this week, but I all 10 I'll, David Blau targets turned into four for 15 yeah, against the Atlanta Falcons. I, you know, I don't know if the 49ers can play 60 minutes of solid, aggressive ball when I don't know what the score is going to be. Sure. But it's going to be something where you probably have backups playing prevent at the end of this game and some of those targets finally start turning into yards in a PPR league, you know, the Dorch can still be played and what do you think of what do you make of the 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 breakout of Trey McBride last week? Are you willing to look his way in fantasy or in in DraftKings? I am. Uh I would be willing to do that. Trey McBride one of six rookie tight ends over the last decade to put up a game of 775-1, and one, and we're talking about Jordan Reed, uh, Schmevin Schmangrum, back when we were really getting excited about him, George Kittle. The great Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. Um, I mean, that hasn't translated yet. Any day now. Oh, it's coming. Any day now, the Kyle Pitts breakout is going to happen. But, yes, uh, if if there's any anything exciting about this Arizona side of the football game, it's, it's Trey McBride. It's do they follow up? that amount of usage with a, with a repeat performance. And hopefully they do. First tight end off the board, second round pick. As a, as a, a philosopher once uh, said, drafted to be great. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that's what we see. On the other side of the ball. I would play George Kittle on the other side of the ball. He's going to be very good against Arizona. Yeah, I, I think that is a fair thing to say. However, the last six weeks, Jason... Arizona, eighth in schedule adjusted points against the tight end position. Yeah, what I mean, say you? Well, I, I think the last six Lucky? Weeks, <laughs> the last six weeks is not actually schedule adjusted. I think if you Oh it's not. No, the last six weeks is just their matchup. So um you know, when you play teams that don't use tight ends, you don't give up a bunch of points to tight ends. Um, Fair enough. I don't I don't have their schedule off the top of the dome, but I'm guessing that they didn't play great tight ends because you know, usually tight ends dominate them. They played Kyle Pitt's team. Okay, so perfect example, right? Like if they played the Atlanta Falcons, who's scoring points for tight end? That's gonna that's gonna pump up their uh their jam. What do you do? What pump do you it do? up. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver fifteen on the year since week six? He is the wide receiver seven. And yet Debo Samuel, full practice Wednesday and Thursday. If Debo is back, what's your confidence level for Brandon Ayuk? If Debo Samuel is back, I am. I I don't know how much it changes my opinion of Ayuk. Not that much because I view Ayuk as a low end wide receiver two, probably more of a wide receiver three this week. Um, 
it's really been Kittle who is taking more out of the game plans when Debo is back. It, it It's really hard for me to imagine. You know, I know the timeline is right. He's practicing, so put him out there, but you're just going to dominate the Cardinals. You're are you going to dominate him. I can't imagine playing. Are you going to play Debo? No, no. I'm okay. certainly not going to play Debo Samuel. I'm saying that if I was Kyle Shanahan, I also certainly would not play Debo Samuel. Gotcha. I think I'd want him to warm up, go through the routine, maybe get some reps. Yeah, play a quarter. Take take a hit and just like that thing, where get it out of the way, remind yourself that you're okay. The running back position for San Francisco, flow chart. If Christian McCaffrey is active, you're going to play him. If he is inactive and Elijah Mitchell is brought up, you're going to play I him. I think you're playing Elijah Mitchell over Jordan Mason. Should somehow McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell remain out, Jordan Mason is in play against the putrid Cardinals rushing defense. The Los Angeles Rams are 5-11. and 11. The Seattle Seahawks are 8-8. Eight and eight. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus 6. The over-under sitting at 41.5. The Seahawks are motivated. They need to win and become the biggest Dan Campbell fan in the world. That is the note from Kyle. It's true. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> You're so sincere. It's true, guys. This, this, they would have to be the Dan Campbell fan of the fan of the year. I'm big Guns Mahoney fans back here. Oh, Guns Mahoney. We we don't use that nickname enough when talking about Dan. Well, Campbell. because now we now we know who he is. The reason he was Guns Mahoney is because he was an interim head coach of the Miami Dolphins, and we knew nothing about him Other than except he that he jacked. that he curls like eighty pounds per arm. He's very buff. He is. Um, yeah, I mean, the the Seahawks, so I, I'm interested in this Kenneth Walker news. Didn't participate Thursday with ankle and illness. He has taken some rest days over the last couple weeks. Um, Mid-show here, I had Kenneth Walker in my DraftKings lineup. I took him out just because of the news. I still expect him to play. It, it's hard on a Friday to lock your roster in. But assuming he's active, you're going to play him. He's been great. The Rams defense is not scary. I agree. Uh, like Geno Smith is very interesting. 367 and three passing touchdowns versus the Rams in week 13. Metcalf, check. He's in. Lockett did not practice. But if he's active, I'm playing Tyler Lockett. Like we said, the Seahawks are in full motivation. They have to win this game. Yep. Are you, are you scared of Lockett at all? Uh, I mean, I prefer my players practicing, but Lockett's so talented, I right. would be fine throwing Lockett in. He's, um, you know, if you look at Tyler Lockett in a full motivation game, um, his talent, Geno Smith is really, he's not just playing for the playoffs. I mean, right now that probably is, but he's also playing for hopefully a career sure. uh, as a starter for the Seahawks. And um, Lockett is going to be your best friend on the path to getting there. On the Ram side of the ball, this is really easy okay. to me because hit me. The, the the Seahawks have been really good against quarterbacks, wide receivers, and really bad against running backs and tight ends. And when you look at the Rams, I don't want to start anybody in general against anyone except for Cam Akers or Tyler Higby. So it's like, okay, well, we, you can start those two guys in this matchup. The matchup is really nice. It lines up well for them as a team, and I, I want to start Akers, and I want to start Higby. I am in agreement. We're moving on. The Dallas Cowboys are 12 and 4, taking on the Washington Manders at 7, 8, and 1. DraftKings Sportsbook line sitting at Dallas minus 7. The over under is at 41. Sanity prevailed for the Washington Manders. Jason's boy, mm. Sam Howell, will get his first start. Yeah, I, I don't like that it's against the Dallas Cowboys because I want him to be um, the, the great quarterback that he is. You know uh, that if, if he takes this job, he will play that team twice a year. Yeah, but we all know he's not going to take this job. So, <laughs> I mean, let's. I'm, I'm trying to live in the real world here, um, talking about how great Sam Howell is. The nice thing is Sam Howell is very athletic. He can run a lot. So, for fantasy purposes, I think you could have a surprisingly good game here from Sam Howell. I'm not going to start him in fantasy championship week. But, you know, if I'm putting out a lineup – um, you know, a, a GPP and I want to try to hit, you've had some big performances against the Dallas Cowboys over the last couple of weeks at the quarterback position. Um, it, Dallas is going to be playing for something. Obviously the, they'll be scoreboard watching at halftime, but you know, they, they need this game. So their offense is good enough. And I think Howell, if he uses his legs, if they let Howell run a lot, he, he could be okay. Now that's not great for the 
receivers. Yeah, that's what we need to talk about here. Terry McLaurin was brought back to life by Taylor Heineke. That's gone. Jahan Dotson, a uh, for for what we have seen, looks like a fully legit, possibly a budding superstar wide receiver here. But with Sam Howell at the quarterback position. I mean, it's what are, what level are we talking about? The replacements that would go in over Terry or Dotson? Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 talking about you know we're Tyler Lockett. He's he's concerning. I would play him in a heartbeat over all three of these players. You don't know who he's going to target. You see backups come in all the time and kind of target the backup. This week was the first time all year that Sam Howell had thrown a pass to Terry McLaurin, like ever. Cortland Sutton or one of the man. Yeah, I I think I would go Cortland Sutton in this game. You know, he's. Um, he's had the targets. He's got Russell Wilson still playing. We just have no idea how this will uh, break down. Now, Jahan Dotson, they were in rookie minicamp together, so there's a little bit more rapport there with Sam Howell and Dotson, but it, it really difficult to know a couple of things. One, how much are they going to let him pass? In general, if they're playing to win, I would be more worried. I would be one of those um, game plan expectations of they're going to try to have him throw the ball fewer than 20 times win the game on the ground but they're putting Sam Howell out there over a healthy enough to play Taylor Heineke because they want to see him mm -hmm. so I think they will let him throw the ball a little bit more um but it's just so difficult to to rely on one of these wide receivers um if I could like in this game if I've got to play a wide receiver I will go CD Lamb bold thank you Bold stuff yeah. from Jason Moore. Uh, it's very difficult. On the running back side, though, the Jonathan Williams would be the next man up should Brian Robinson not be able to go. Again, Antonio Gibson on IR. Potential nasty boy start. 14 opportunities this past week. He would see volume. The matchup is not fantastic, but he will get the ball. Dak, I mean, like the Cowboys, I think we're, we're at full confidence here. They, they are going to play to win. And I think everybody who you normally play is in, right? Uh, I would agree. Um, the the Manders have a good defense, so I'm not expecting huge performances from Zeke and Pollard, but they're in your lineup. Pollard it was a full practice on Wednesday, yep. so we we expect him back. Sunday he, he night, probably oh. he probably could have played last week. I think it was the the Titans resting yes. Henry, and so I'm I'm not worried about Pollard's health right now. Sunday night football: the Detroit Lions are eight and eight. The Green Bay Packers are eight and eight. I lied. This is also an ultimate palindrome oh, game. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, eight, eight and eights. Well, hey, here we are. It feels less like a palindrome. A little bit. Because, like, it's all the same. And so, obviously, it's the same backwards and forwards, but it doesn't feel like a palindrome. Like, if I, if I said, ooh, <laughs> would you say that's a palindrome? I mean, technically, yeah. But it's dumb. This, isn't a, this, this okay. doesn't have the heart of a palindrome game. Okay, so... We're not we're not giving it that. I'm not. You okay. can do what you want. You're hosting. <laughs> <laughs> what a show we have for you today. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Green Bay minus five. The over under is sitting at forty nine. The Seattle Seahawks they are, they will be in a big implication on this because the Detroit Lions will know. Can they make it in based off of Seattle? If Seattle wins, they can't. But Detroit is certainly going to try and spoil the offseason for the Green Bay Packers. Dan Campbell, Guns Mahoney, High T, all of his players are going to play this week. Yeah, it's it's going to take us to the last game of the week. It, it's really the, right. it's like the first game and the last game of the week are awesome. And then you got a bunch of crap mixed in the middle. Um, I do think that um, I want players in this game. No matter what the outcome of Seattle – the motivation for the Lions will be very, very high. Where are you with Jared Goff, who has been a dominant home quarterback, 274, 2.6 passing touchdowns per game, on the road, 248 and .9 touchdowns. We did see a big performance from him recently, but he's going to Lambeau. He's going to Lambeau at night. I am okay starting Jared Goff. Uh, he's been a top 10 quarterback for the last five weeks. One of those was on the road in a cold environment. It's not perfect, but the weapons are so good. Amon Ross St. Brown is a dude. Jamison Williams getting worked in more. He's probably their best wide receiver going forward. Uh, he will be. DJ Chark has, has looked good. Um, 
you know, and obviously DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. <laughs> Jamison Williams, we keep saying that maybe he'll be worked in more. Uh, he's still sitting at one catch. Well, the nice thing is they the, the way that they On were the used the way that they used him this last week. He he had three targets. Um, there was a great play that really they had the sweep. Yes, it it, it really got me excited because it was like, oh man, he, they're not just using him on nine routes. He came across the formation and was. I mean, if Jared Goff so fast, if Jared Goff put that ball on him in stride, he could have taken that to the house, and and we'd be talking about a massive touchdown. But he threw it behind him, and I think that's going to happen quite often because you just can't believe how fast he is. It's like he threw it way ahead of him, and then it's like, oh no, that is still behind him. You've got to you got to throw it, you know, uh, ten yards ahead of that guy. Would you go with Jared Goff or Geno Smith? I'll go Geno. Geno's been really, really good. If assuming Lockett is active, um, he's at home. I'll I'll go Geno there. <sighs> DeAndre Swift, the running back three last week. You playing him? Yeah, I mean, I, I get that you have the burns, but DeAndre Swift was great. He is healthy. I'm not, I'm not doing well. Uh, it, I am not doing well after watching DeAndre Swift go out and do that. I think there's a lot of people. On my defeated team. You know, a lot of people have that kind of feeling about uh, Mike Evans as well, right? Like you, you, you have, if you didn't get to the championship, part sure. of the, part of the way you didn't get there yes. is because Mike Evans continually let you down in that stretch run. And then you're like, Oh, I would have won the championship yep. if I got there. So it's, it's very disappointing when these players who you want to rely on, who are great are disappointing, kick you out. And then after you're out, you go, I can see, I knew it. Yeah. And some would say, well, perhaps, Hey Mike, did you watch that? And then get, you know, excited about the potential for DeAndre Swift next year. No, it just made my rage boil over even more. Yeah. I uh, loathe I loathe him. Um, you still do have a three-headed committee here, which sucks. Like, why is Justin Jackson, you know, why well, is, is he, a, he back? Why is he a thing? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's uh, back for sure. It was real nice not having him. He was out with a hip last week. Yeah, it was, it was very nice not having him because you had – uh, good games from uh, Swift and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is a handful of yards away from a quarter milli bonus. So Ooh, that's a big money bonus. Yeah, that's a big money bonus. I, I'm starting both of the running backs. I'm starting Amon Ra. I don't think I'm going to dabble in the Chark, Jamison Williams. Okay. Uh, the question is on the other side of the ball. You have had the you've really had the running backs here for the Packers be leading this offense. Aaron Rodgers hasn't gotten it done. Now in this matchup, you've got the Detroit Lions who have been awesome against running backs and terrible against wide receivers. I like Christian Watson in this matchup. At home, I think Christian Watson, Lambeau leap. Oh, he's going to be that going, a, is that a guarantee? That is a touchdown guarantee. Now is okay. I was gonna think maybe he was leaping with someone else. No, 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 no. It's his are you touchdown. allowed to do that? Can you leap on know. someone uh, else's Green, touchdown? Green Bay Packer super fan, are you allowed to do a team leap? I don't recall a time I've ever seen it, but I don't know the. But official. okay, well, you're the only you're the representative here. I would, would say no. Ooh, okay. Touchdown score gets the leap. All right, Lambo, Lambo. I, I'm not gonna make a touchdown guarantee. I'm gonna make a Lambo leap guarantee. Okay, I mean, you did just make a touchdown guarantee. Uh, but I'm so are you retracting? Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. winding that back in? Winding the <laughs> winding the reel in. Um, but a Lambo leap guarantee. Rodgers, Andy start of the week. Aaron Jones, Andy, Andy start of the week. A.J. Dillon, top 24 in five straight games. They're using him more and more. I think that he has – you can play him. Yeah. Thank goodness. We did it. We did it. What a great show. Nice to – I hope everyone has a uh, wonderful championship week. And we will be back next week on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, have a – goodbye. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. You're going to do me dirty, I know it. What? <laughs> Jason, we're best friends. Oh, man. Last week, Jason was the big loser. And this week, it is me versus Jason versus Kyle slash Owl. Wait. You just brought up the big loser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have? Are we sharing this story right now? <laughs> We've got to share this story because it's too good. It's too good. The biggest loser 
Oh uh, my the, gosh! The biggest lovable loser. We're doing this. I, I'm doing this. I, I'll take full blame <laughs> because uh, Brian Ketron. This uh, is this is the most shameful fantasy football story to ever be told of all time. Best friends for life. Love Brian Ketron. Uh, good dear friend. Um, he works. He, he works on some. He does like video graphics and, and things for us. And and, and, and loser. What a loser! I mean, what, what an a absolute loser. loser. Um, he's called the biggest loser because he lost to me in the listener league championship of which he was in when he should have won. He didn't cause again, loser. Right. So we found out yesterday, we, we found out that there was a test league. We, we, you know, we, uh, needed to make some Yahoo tools and get their API working for some of our stuff. So they are, our guys around the studio, they needed people with Yahoo accounts to come on and just draft a test account to do some testing. And Brian Ketcher was gracious enough. He he hopped in there. Uh, Jeremy, Al, our, pro our programmers, you know, 12 people. Right. Hop in, draft this league. It was just a test league. Goes on. And some people that like, Jeremy, did you draft your team? I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some uh, so I think there was some, some people auto drafted. Some sure. people did a real draft. I hadn't yeah. done a lot of mocking at that time, so that was my sure. Mock so you you just took it as an opportunity for a mock draft. Now you yes, didn't sir. do anything with this league because it was just a fake test league, right? No idea. Did you remember no, I mean, no. that you did this test league? Nope. Yeah, not all about it. There was one person though that played it out. One person. It was Brian Ketron. He made like fifty waiver wire claims <laughs> and played in a dead league he picked up all the waiver wire stars <laughs> and he lost <laughs> he didn't win he got third place and we just <laughs> found this out yesterday <laughs> he got third place playing against nobody also also this jeremy, is a league where people left their bye week players oh, they're yes. starting rosters also jeremy congratulations you're a champion in that league you're darn right out. i am <laughs> oh eat it brian i love you so shameful. Well, I Boom, have to shame. I have to shame someone before I get shamed. Speaking it's of the only shame, way. Yeah, right. wheel of shame. All right, let's go spin that wheel. Spin that wheel. What do we got? Let's see. The I'm Jester, Uncle Sam, Blue Man. Blue Man. Oh no! No! <laughs> How did I not see this coming? Fish face? What's this? Oh no! <laughs> you son of a gun! Not the fish face again! Oh, yes. dang! Put it on! Come it! Let uh. me see your fish face! <laughs> oh, the, the, ah. Get in there, ladies and gentlemen! The fish is being put on! <laughs> He can't even get it on. It's so ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> We're back, baby. <laughs> Let's go fishing. All right. <laughs> Let's get our lineups out there. Welcome back, Jason. Welcome back to the shame. I'll kick things off. My quarterback is Joshua Allen at 8,400 at home against the Patriots. Need to win. Kyle, who do you got? I got Geno Smith, 6K. They need to win as well. Okay. Okay. Let's fish face. Fish face going fishing with Josh Allen. I've got him <laughs> as well, Mike. My, thank you. Uh, my running backs, uh, I'm glad you pivoted out. I'm staying not scared. Kenneth Walker at home against the Rams, 6,400. He will be riding alongside, alongside Mr. Najee Harris against the Cleveland Browns in their run funnel defense at 6,100. I have Najee Harris as well, and then I have one of the nasty boys, Ooh. Jonathan Williams, because Brian Robinson also not practicing today on Friday. Wait, wait uh, Kyle, did you know that we run a fantasy football informational news program? It, I just broke that news. To be fair, he did just break the news. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that? Uh, about uh, two minutes. Liar. <laughs> Liar. I see through your lies. All right. At running back. <laughs> I'm trying to see it through. Talk, talk into the mic, Mr. Fish. Well, I got I only have one hole, and I need to look at the screen, which is not my microphone. If I talk into the microphone, all I see is a microphone. <laughs> all right. I think I've got Dalvin Cook okay. at running back. Ever heard of him? Yeah, he's let a lot of people down recently. Yeah, he's going to let me down <laughs> this week. Um, and I've got Cam Akers. Oh, okay. Cam Akers is a price on draft. 6,200. 6, Thank you. Against the Seattle Seahawks. 
at wide receiver. I will be shocked if you don't have it, Jason. I have Stephon Diggs to go along with the Josh Allen stack. I'm going with Drake London, the target machine for the Atlanta Falcons at home against the Tampa Bay team that is not going to play for anything. 4,900. And, uh, oh, by the way, Stephon Diggs on DraftKings Sportsbook. His TD uh, is uh, – I can't even think of the right way to His phrase. TD prop. His TD prop. Thank you. Minus 110. It is, it's in the minus. A touchdown prop. I mean, that is that is wild stuff, meaning that they, they expect it to happen far more than they do not. And then my start of the week coming in at 4,200, Mr. Rashid Shahid with that need for speed against the Carolina Panthers who just got torched by Mike Evans. Kyle. Uh, I have Stephon Diggs as well, so to mitigate somebody else, Josh Allen. I have DK Metcalf to stack with Geno Smith. Okay. His receiving line is 65 and a half. And then this kind of goes against your Rashid Shahid. I have my boy, Chris Olave, at 6,200. Oh, I figured. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> um, I have uh, Drake London and Stephon Diggs, so we're the same there, Mike. Okay. Well, we're not the same right now at all. No, you're, a, a, you're a fish. I am a fish. <laughs> I am not a fish. I am not a cat. I I'm am ready, a fish. I'm ready to move on. Uh, and then I do have the Dorch. Oh. I'm going full PPR, hoping he gets, you know, five receptions for 50 yards. Oh, he's, we he's did. 3,800. Jason, we just realized, what is your level of concern being a fish next to a giant cardboard bear? Oh, that's not good. <sighs> With a book about eating salmon in front of him. Oh, man. <laughs> At tight end. You asked, Jason, am I okay with it? And I said yes, because Trey McBride is in my lineup against the 49ers at 3,300. My flex, Cam Akers, so we wash out there. And my DST, to make all of this happen, uh, I went with the Arizona Cardinals against the San Francisco 49ers at 2,100, just hoping that maybe there's a little bit of a rookie letdown for Brock Purdy. There probably won't be, but, you know, here we are. At tight end, I have Tyler Higby, 4,400, the best matchup for tight ends. Miles Sanders is my flex. Ooh, that's a good one. At okay. 5,900. And then I have the Broncos defense gambling that that game won't mean anything. So sure. they're super cheap. All right, close us out, Fish Face. All right, I've got Tyler Higby as well. Good matchup, start of the week. And I've got the Jets defense against the Skyler sister at quarterback. Skyler Thompson. Um, and then I'm going uh, I'm going fishing here okay with elijah mitchell oh doing some projecting here and that was your pivot on the show that was my pivot i i was worried apparently about kenneth walker um missing practice so i went with a guy who hasn't played and we don't know if he's even going to be a starter that or is... if the starter is active yeah, it the, may... the forter niners did just update and say he is expected to play yeah but what about chris mccaffrey he, they said, quote, if he's not right, we won't have him out there. Want him right for the playoffs, but if healthy, he'll play. Let's go, Missile. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BALLERS to get $200 of free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. That's going to do it for today's show. We'll close it out so Jason can remove the fish face. It's warm in these rhinos. If you are playing for a championship this weekend, we wish you nothing but the best. Your enemy is nothing but the worst. Good luck, everybody. We will see you on Tuesday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.